Hey everyone, welcome to Rugged Outdoors Guide. My name is Pete. Yesterday, I was out on a lake reviewing this kayak behind me. And as I was coming back from the review, pulling into shore, I did something that made a guy on the shore look at me and go, wow, that's totally amazing. How much does that cost? And I said to him, ah, around 3,000 bucks or so. And he looked at me and he said, what, that's it? We're gonna be talking about what I did and why he thinks that's a good price for this kayak. Okay, so the kayak we're talking about is from a company called Das King. And it's called a Nautilus. That's their model for this particular kayak. And this is a, a, a brand, they're out of Collingwood, Ontario and they are full disclosure. It's not a brand whose products are fully made in North America. They are made overseas, but they're not made in China. They're made in Taiwan. To you, that might not mean a whole lot. It's all the same to you. But in fact, speaking to those who are in the know in the industry, Taiwan is a step up. It's an upgrade from a typical Chinese brand. I'm just saying, it's stuff what I've, what I've heard, all right? So here's the thing. It's a brand where the owner collaborates with the factory and they do modifications and they do things to make the brand what it is. It's not just a cookie cutter off the, you know, out of the factory and, and on the truck, right? So, Das King is located in Collingwood, Ontario, in that area. So they'll deliver anywhere in pretty much Southern Ontario, which is a really big deal. So if you're anywhere in Southern Ontario, the GTA, Hamilton, Niagara, uh, up in the cottage country, wherever, uh, they will help you out and you can visit them. They're relatively um, short drive from anywhere that I just mentioned, <laughs> all right? And you can visit their uh, showroom. So Das King Nautilus, what's so amazing about this? Well, before I tell you that, let's just get into some of the specs and then we'll get into uh, some of the features. The Das King Nautilus is 10 feet and four inches long. It's 34 inches wide and 31 inches tall. The total weight is 84 pounds, which is not exactly super light, but the capacity, the weight capacity is 396 pounds. That's greater than average, especially for a kayak that's barely over 10 feet. The material is a three layer high density polyethylene UV resistant. Uh, and that is also in contrast to low density polyethylene, which kayaks are often made of as well. High density just means it's, it's stronger all around. It might be a little more brittle than low density, but it's tougher and stronger overall. Okay, let's look at some of the features now. Start off here, we've got a paddle keeper, right? Right here on the side, like most kayaks have. And of course the paddle is included. It's just a two piece, three position aluminum paddle. It's got two hatches, and um, here's the one in the front. It's lockable, of course, and that can be removed. And then, of course, you've got access to the hull area inside. So that's one hatch. Just lock one part of it here. And the other hatch is back here behind the seat, right? And again, it's a removable nylon um, pouch back there. And of course, lockable. So in addition to that, it's got something really cool that I really appreciate, and that is a steel rudder. All right, here it is back here. I've tried a few kayaks that have a plastic rudder. I mean, they worked fine, but there's just something that says quality and longevity when it comes to steel. Of course, one of the big features of this particular kayak is that it's got this removable pedal propeller drive. All right now, if you guys know anything about your kayaks, you'll know that this looks a whole lot like a native kayak propel drive system. And uh, it's got a uh, 10 to one ratio, which trust me, that is a very good thing. The speed you can get on the water is truly amazing compared to some other drives. Of course, it's got a uh, aluminum seat, aluminum frame seat with, uh, it's adjustable down here. You can tighten it up, but uh, you can, you know, slide it back and forth and adjust it. 
and uh, you know you, you'll want that because everyone's got different legs uh, length legs and uh, you're basically riding a bike on the water a recumbent bike and so you're gonna want to adjust that it's got two side handles just like this one on this side and there's another one on the other side which can serve to, to both transport the kayak and, and uh, kind of hold it upright when you're getting it onto the vehicle, as well as carrying it if you want to carry it that way with two people, one on each side. It's also got carry handles on the front and rear. And the carry handles, of course, have a recessed area here on, well, on both the front and the rear for your knuckles, for your whole hand. Like any good fishing kayak, it's got flush mount rod holders it has two at the back there and then just beside the seat there's another one and then it's also got two rod holders for it's i they're not really rail mount i wanted to say rail mount it's sort of a permanent mount right here on the side and uh it's got one on this side and here is space for the other one there two of them are included in the whole deal and like every fishing kayak on planet Earth, there is storage in behind the seat. Something a little bit unusual about this storage is that, you know, it's got the regular bungee here to hold everything in. It looks, looks pretty normal at first glance. The problem is this. This steering linkage down here, right? It's what, it's, it's the, uh, I guess, whatever you want to call it, part of the rudder mechanism. It, uh, it, it turns, works fine, but the problem is if you put anything on top of that, it won't work, right? So for example, if I put this milk crate, this regular milk crate, it's, I've just got it sitting on top of the, uh, the bungees now, but if I let it sit there, take the bungees away, it'll sit right on top of that rudder control and it won't work. Well. A milk crate's not very big, but it can't go anywhere else except for maybe right there. But then you really can't use these bungees to uh, lock it down. But even if you do decide to put it there, now you're covering the hatch on the back. So it's a little bit of a design flaw. So what I'm going to have to do is take a milk crate, adjust it, add some spacers on the very bottom so that it doesn't sit right on top of the rudder control mechanism and then it should work fairly well. Okay, the other thing that I didn't really like about this kayak is that the scupper plugs, they are extremely difficult to put in and out of their holes. Okay, that's a bad thing. Scupper plugs need to go in and out freely while still being, um, you know, sealing the water out. But these are so hard, my son, when he was trying to pull them out, he couldn't pull it out. I had to do it. And then to put him back in, he was standing on them with his heel, right? That's the only way he could get them in. And yesterday when I was desperately trying to pull these plugs before I got flooded, it broke. It just, see that? Just broke. And so I don't think I can even get it out. It's scratching my fingers off these. Okay, well, I didn't break. The other end didn't break that time, but I'm pretty positive the other end is going to break any moment. Try to get that back in. There we go. Okay. But just try doing it as fast as I did when you actually need it on the water. It won't happen. You'll start cursing. The Nautilus also comes with an option to replace the pedal drive with a 36 pound thrust electric motor. And it's a couple hundred dollar upgrade, but uh, it's really not that bad a deal if you are less into physical fitness and more into pure fishing. And of course, the whole deal comes with a lifetime warranty on the kayak itself. So that is a great deal you can buy with confidence and uh, they will be sure to take care of you over at Das King in Collingwood, Ontario. Okay, guys, I almost forgot to tell you <laughs> what I did with my Das King kayak that made the guy on shore during my review say, wow, that's just a great price, $3,000. You probably haven't seen this in a kayak and he certainly hasn't. So that's what made it unusual. And what I did was I, when I was coming in from the lake towards shore, just about maybe 30, 40 feet from shore, instead of just gliding straight in with my bow, I did a sort of a, a 180 and I 
pointed my bow back out to the lake and then I just instantly pedaled backwards and reversed it and steered it perfectly like a parallel parking right it was just and it just gently bumped up against the dock so it was kind of cool if you've never seen it before it's a sight to behold everyone else is out there paddling like crazy with their arms you know the traditional way and this is just a novelty unusual to see um, in a kayak so anyway all right, so Das King is not like the only kayak company that will give you a pedal drive kayak. Uh, they will do it for the best price for a propeller drive kayak. There are other companies that do uh, sort of the Mirage Drive, which is an interesting comparison. I've got a, a video coming out soon that will compare the two, the paddle Mirage Drive versus a propeller drive. So you don't wanna miss that. But Das King will give you the best deal on a propeller drive kayak anywhere in Southern Ontario. All right, guys, full disclosure, full disclosure. Das King did not give me any sort of special deal or incentive to do this review, all right? This is a real review. I bought this kayak with my own money. Das King didn't even give me a particular discount or deal. The only thing they did do is give me a price that is hard to beat, and they will do that for you as well, all right? It's not special for me. So make sure you check them out in Collingwood, Ontario. You can check them out online, dosking.com. All right, let's get this beast out on the water and see how it performs in the waves and the wind. All right, guys, here I am. I feel like I'm on the ocean. I got white caps going on. And uh, look at this. This, uh, the cover over the pedal mechanism is just kind of flipping up every time I hit some waves and water is coming in so um, I'm gonna try to make it to some quiet water and then empty it out if I if I try to open my scupper hole plugs water comes in as well so let's see if I can uh, make it to shore here in one piece I see her rolling up through her black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad After her there ain't no coming back Wanna take a run at that I think she's feeling me, turn it up a few degrees My imagination of her body gets the best of me Oh gosh, she's such a tease, big lips bruised Alright, so I made it to some quieter water And uh, <laughs> I can tell you right now, there's some things that I uh, like and don't like about this this uh, model of kayak now the good thing is that the hull itself was able to deal with bigger waves white caps crashing right into me and even a little bit from the side not a lot of water came in over the edge but the problem is that where the pedal drive enters the water that trench in the middle here it had a bit of a, um, a tray on it which is good but every time I hit big waves the tray itself would pop up and water would come in at quite a rate. So uh, at first when I opened the scupper holes, it, more water was coming in, but eventually I got so much water in by my feet that the scupper holes did actually do some good and let the water out as they should. So that was good, but uh, it's a little bit scary. It, I, got, uh, I got about uh, three inches or so of water in about five minutes of you know, uh, emphatic paddling against the waves. So that's one thing that I'm not thrilled about. The other thing is that I noticed the rod holders, the um, the rail mount rod holders, they're actually not on rails, but they are like that. It's like a permanent position for them. And unless the rod is facing directly forward, like it's, my rod tip is literally over the bow of the kayak then you won't be able to pedal, all right? So if you want the rod kind of sticking out as you would have it if you were trolling, then you would need to not paddle. You'd have to use your, your, um, your paddles instead of the pedal drive, all right? So just a couple of little things that, I, I wouldn't call them deal breakers, but anyway, just a couple of, of things that I've noticed along the way, and this is actually only after about 10 minutes on the water. So 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a speed test. And I did one on a pedal drive, or I should say a paddle drive, like a Mirage. And I got to about three miles per hour. I think for about one second I hit four. And it was in a very light tailwind. So that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, here. Uh, here, let me just put this down. Here we go. <laughs> oh, right, right now I'm at five miles an hour. Let's see if I can hit six. Yeah, too much drag. I can feel me plowing through the water. Oh. Okay, guys, I hit five miles an hour. Now, I did have a kayak out on the water a little while ago, did a different review, you can check that one out too, with a Mirage drive, like a, a, a paddle drive, right? So they go like this, there's no propeller, you know what I mean, like the Hobies. Now it wasn't a Hobie drive, it was a generic one, right? So we're talking a Canadian $2,500 kayak with a Mirage style drive, and I got to three miles an hour, with a very, very gentle tailwind. And um, I, I I wanna say I hit four at some point. I don't, honestly, I don't even remember seeing the number four on my cell phone speedometer. Now, I don't know how accurate this is, but I do know that I'm just comparing, I'm using the same app. And so on this one, I got to five and I really wanted to hit six, didn't really work. I could feel the whole, kayak just kind of plowing through the water at that point and uh, it just it wasn't working so anyway that's kind of the deal uh, it, it does go faster than th this is a generic pedal drive it's uh, so the generic pedal drive that I'm using is a virtual duplicate of natives uh, propel drive and um, so it's it's just as much a generic drive as the other one I used is a generic copy of Hobie. And uh, honestly, I, <laughs> this one goes faster. It actually goes a full two miles an hour faster, which is a lot when you consider that top speed on the Hobie clone was only three miles an hour, and this one was five. And I was feeling it was on the edge of six, <laughs> but I couldn't get it there. such a small kayak, just barely over 10 feet, it does give me enough stability that I can stand up and cast uh, without constantly thinking about whether I'm going <laughs> to lose my balance or tip over. It gives me enough stability. Obviously not as much as a, a larger kayak, but good enough to make me happy that I can stretch my legs every now and then. But definitely standing is not going to be my default position most of the time. I got a really comfortable seat, thrilled with it. I love the instant reverse. <laughs> awesome. This is an old train bridge. I'm about to go under one of the abutments. It's actually not that old.
All right, friends, thank you for watching my Das King Nautilus review. You can always check them out, dasking.com, and they will be thrilled to serve you. And it's, it's overall, it is a very good kayak. I've seen some really expensive ones, and I've touched them, and I've felt them, and I've tried them a little bit, and I've knocked on them. They're really kind of the same. Very, very similar in features and in construction and everything, but you're gonna pay two times or more as much uh, for another brand as you will with Das King. They don't have uh, a big retail place where they have to pay overhead and lots of employees or anything like that. So they can offer you a deal that will probably beat the other guy 98% of the time. Guys, if you appreciate reviews like this and um, also trip documentary, I'm really looking forward to doing some of those this year and uh, DIY projects and all that great stuff, please do give me a like and a subscribe because it does not cost you a single penny to do that. And Google and YouTube just love it when you do. So I would appreciate that. And until the next time, guys, get out there. Enjoy God's creation. And above all, keep on looking up.